This presentation is about blood vessels and tissue fluid. In particular, I'd like to focus on how the tissue fluid is formed and how that fluid is then returned to the blood. To start with, we need to look at the blood vessels themselves. So here is a capillary. The cells and the fluid are in the lumen, and then that is surrounded by a very thin layer of cells uh, called the endothelium, made of endothelial cells. Here we've got a vein. Uh, a vein has a relatively wide lumen. It's still surrounded by the endothelium, but there's also a layer of elastic tissue and a layer of muscular tissue. And then there's the tough outer layer uh, uh, on the outside. Compare that to this picture of an artery. An artery has a relatively narrow lumen, not necessarily represented in this picture, but the key items are it has a much thicker elastic layer and a much thicker muscular layer. This is to allow it to expand and contract uh, to withstand the pressure from the, uh, the blood when the heart contracts. So here we go back to the capillary then. Uh, the capillary uh, has a, the thin endothelial layer that we talked about, but that allows diffusion. You get diffusion of water and salts and glucose and various other small molecules or particularly fat soluble molecules. However, you don't get movement of cells, platelets, large proteins and, and uh, large molecules. One extra point I'll make here is about the fact that white blood cells can move out of the capillaries through the endothelial layer into the tissues. But that only occurs due to special signalling, which we talked about in immunology. So special signals are made. The white blood cell can attach to the endothelial layer and then manoeuvre itself between two cells. That is not something that generally happens. The cells generally stay inside the capillaries. Right, the final point I'd like to make about the vessels themselves is the pressure of the fluid. Uh, the fluid is under pressure because the blood needs to be pushed around the circulatory system. This is called hydrostatic pressure. The hydrostatic pressure in the arteries is high and in the veins is low. There is still pressure there but it's much lower in the veins. Okay, we're ready to talk about the overview, the whole thing. So here's my diagram that I want you to look at very carefully we've got blood coming in from the left hand side of the screen in an arteriole. Uh, the arteriole divides into capillaries. The capillaries pass between the cells and then recombine at the right hand side of the screen in a vein. And we've also got the lymph capillaries labelled in this diagram as well. So let's have a close-up look at a capillary on the left-hand side of this image, close to an arteriole. The hydrostatic fluid pressure is high, pushing fluid out of the capillary. But there is also osmosis going on, and the capillary fluid has a lower water potential. Therefore, water is drawn into, or fluid is drawn into the capillary. However, the net movement of water is out of the capillary into the tissue. Now we're going to have a look at a capillary at the right-hand side of the screen, near a venule. Here, the hydrostatic fluid inside the capillary is lower, and in fact it's lower than the tissue fluid hydrostatic pressure. Therefore, there is a net movement of water in but also there is the osmotic pull of water and fluid into the capillary as well. So overall there is a large movement of fluid into the capillary. However, not all of the fluid moves from the tissue into the capillary. So overall some of the blood fluid is left in the tissues and that is pushed into the lymphatic capillaries and the lymph drains back into the blood. 
I hope that clarifies that uh, mechanism for you. Uh, I'll leave you with a little summary of the key points.